Welcome internet, my name is Jack and I'm one hour into Castle Storm, a game that's just been released onto Steam and it's so much fun to play. It's been released by Zen Studios and it's been out on the Xbox 360 and it's now come to PC and there's actually some DLC coming out at the end of this week for both systems which I'll talk a bit more about later. But the game's got some quite cool features about it, single player and multiplayer, but what the game is all about is actually building up castles and destroying your opponents. So I'm going to get straight into a single player match, I've been playing the campaign for a bit now and it's a really good way of just showing it off, so I'm going to do on the missions I've just completed. Now I've been playing on hard the whole way through and I've actually found it a decent challenge, there's been a couple of missions I've had to redo, but I'm going to go ahead and play it on normal difficulty uh, just for the sake of this video, so I can show off some, some of the cooler features. The game is presented in this artistic, cartoony style. It's got also a silliness about it as well. So, in the missions here we've been rescuing some donkey riders, and we talk about the enemy who's now upgraded their castle with a brand new ballista like the one we've been using. So in a sense you're building up castles, and you can customise it like in terms of Lego, you, in the past you can build whatever you wanted to. Um, and then you can also shoot things across like Angry Birds style, which is definitely not the first, play, first person to do it, but you can shoot things across to knock out the enemy castle. And we're accusing that, don't you find it strange they have the same technology, and it's pretty obvious out of the three of us who is the one who's been giving the technology away. I think the dark clothing kind of gives it away. Nothing, but I'll keep an eye on you. And then in ridiculously stupid humour, yeah, it, it's you can get the idea from that kind of humour, what the game, you know, how the game takes itself. But that's really cool, it's a kind of fun approach to it. So this is how the gameplay works, you have our castle on the left here, and it's built up of different rooms that I could have customised, and I think this one may have been customised or it might be one of the default ones, and then there's the enemy over here. We have our default, you know, fight things to fire, so we've got um, plain old arrows, if I can get a headshot that's way better, there we go. And then we've also got some other combinations like, you know, a triple shot and whatnot. Uh, there's an exploiting apple which we'll try and use to knock out the enemy base. And that's a good start for weakening those walls. And then we've also got the try shot of the big rocks. Cool. So that's a good start knocking out the base. And you've also got uh, units to create, so we can drop down, say, a paladin um, and some other guys. But you've got a food supply which you build up. So I've been upgraded my archers a lot because I found them absolutely amazing. So let's take out some more of these enemy troops. And so, this is like the two games so far I've seen. There's been games where, you know, you fling through into across to knock out an enemy castle. There's also the one where you send units across as well. But then the third component that brings you to uh, something you've probably seen before. And, oh gosh, that knocked out quite well, my guys. I'm going to fire these across. In terms of a hack and slash game. Uh, so, there is normal spells that I can cast. So, for example, I can... Well, actually, I'm not probably going to waste on that one guy there. I can cast down spells like healing spells, for example. I should heal him up, which is very nice. But then also, and cast this spell, which ports me into the battlefield, and now I can play the game like a hack and, hack and slash game. So I'm gonna use my arrow. There's actually no one here to fight, which is probably a poor demonstration of me. But you got your special attacks. I probably should get out of here. But it's cool that you've got so many different aspects to the game. You could level up your character a lot in this mode, so you could play with, you know, that in the in the third person mode. But if you do enjoy playing as a, in terms of the... I'm going to have to get this guy. Oh, just too slow. Or you can play, you know, upgrade your your castle in terms of its firepower as well. So I'm going to buy a few more archers here because once I get enough archers I just seem to be able to control the battlefield. I can have up to 11 guys so I've upgraded it. Pretty much just to have mass archers. This may be uh, maybe an overpowered tactic in the game but it seems to be very good at controlling these guys. So let's fire some more apples over, because that makes complete sense. And as you can see, this game is quite silly, because we're going to fire our rainbow sheep. Now you see there is a bonus objective failed, which isn't something I was actually trying to do. But it's something where, you know, you can get a amount of stars and a rating for each level. And the thing I found about this game, there's a lot of content in it. So there's a single player campaign, but there's also skirmish mode and dual modes. But then there's multiplayer, there's split screen co-op, there's multiplayer online. And it, there'll be actually, I'll show you some footage right now of earlier games where I've been playing. I've actually got completely dominated in all the games I've played. Because the people online are really, really good. But there's a whole ranking system or unranked system about playing online as well. So there's last stand mode where you're using a hero to fight off the enemy. There we go, we've knocked out the castle. And it's it's quite cool how it's just this 
the, these simple concepts brought together in a fun way. It's quick, short missions, and there's actually a variety of missions between. Sometimes you're forced into using hero, sometimes you're forced using just a ballista, and sometimes it's a mixture of the like a, you know an escort mission. But thankfully, they're not that boring. Where you're walking along someone the whole time. Like I had to escort uh, donkeys, for example, back from the middle to my base, and that was kind of a challenge to having to push the line up quite close to his base. Also between missions you can spend the money that you've earned during the missions on your equipment. So for example if you want to spend it on your projectiles, so these are the arrows and the sheep and the apples. If you want to spend it on your spells, so you know teleporting yourself into the battlefield or you're attacking your healing magic. Uh, on your troops, so I've got really strong archers at the moment, or your rooms, and these are the custom rooms which you can put inside your castle. And if we switch over to the castle view, you'll see there's lots of different combinations you can build. I haven't unlocked those ones yet. But the coolest thing about it is the editor, and that's where you can really get into the nitty gritty of customizing a castle in your way. The, ca the customization of this seems a, a bit finicky at times, like if I want to create, if I want to change it, I can't click away. I have to click and then click every piece. But after a bit of getting used to, it's it's fine. Now the advantage here is there's certain rooms there, and in the main game you need certain rooms to build certain pieces. Uh, for example, the barracks need to be built to these barracks down here need to be built for produce a certain unit. So we've got normal swordsmen and archers and whatnot. And if you lose that room during the battle, it means you can't actually produce that unit. So when I was playing online, my enemy would knock out all of my my troop building troop rooms, and then I couldn't build any troops. And that's when I got completely dominated. This game seems like it's got a great amount of value. It's got a lot of potential, and after a first hour, I can see myself playing this game quite a lot. I feel like I'm not too far through the campaign, but it should be about another hour or two, definitely at least. But to go through and collect all the stars as well, it, it's going to be quite a challenge, which would be a lot of fun. I should mention that also online, it's not the first person to destroy the other person's castle. There's actually multiple ways to win. There's a flag in your base, so it can actually be getting either destroying the castle first or getting your troops into the base and getting the flag back. So having both of those different ways is quite cool. And that DLC I mentioned earlier, so there's DLC coming out on the 31st of July and it presents a new brand new faction which is quite cool, a new environment, an unlikely hero, uh, new battles and weapons and whatnot and that's quite cool and it's only coming out for $3 on Steam and 240 Microsoft points which is a very very cool thing to see. Just a little small Quite a lot of, it seems like quite a lot of DLC, but not very much, which is really nice to see from the developers. So these are my impressions of Castle Storm one hour in, and it gives a huge seal of approval from me. There is so much potential in this game, there's so much fun to be had in the campaign of skirmish and then survival modes, but then they're also into the multiplayer, either local or online, and there's different modes and on. Uh, unranked and it is just so much here and it seems great value i got it for ten dollars in my region it may be cheaper in yours but it seems like it's a great purchase nevertheless my name's jack and i hope you enjoyed this video i'll see you next time